Football is the most popular sport in the world. And the FIFA World Cup is one of the most watched and anticipated sporting events on the planet. So it makes sense that the land responsible for this, this and this has also caught the football fever. And despite the power of God and anime, Japan has failed to win the World Cup. But this year, Japan is done playing around, producing not one, but two anime that tackle this problem. How can Japan win the World Cup? The two shows in question are Ao Ashi and Blue Lock. One of them is your stereotypical sports anime. We have to do it for our senpais. And the other one is written by Shadow the Hedgehog. I refuse to explain myself. In this video, we will look at the real world viability of both of these shows and if they can help Japan finally win the World Cup. Honestly, this video pushed me to my limits, man. I thought I could just go, ha, anime stupid, but I ended up researching football tactics, history, and statistics. And god damn it, I don't understand anything. God fucking damn it, waste all my fucking time. Fucking cut. But before we dive into these shows, I have to address the elephant in the room. Why the fuck would you look at anime for football advice? And yeah, I know, anime is some goofy shit sometimes. Did, did he just use his teammate as a bat? Holy shit. An anime won't make Japan win the World Cup, right? Well, approximately 40 years ago, in 1981, a manga was released that would forever change Japanese football. A story that inspired generations of football pros and also inspired this silly little anime YouTuber. You guessed it, Captain Tsubasa. Nowadays, football is Japan's third most popular sport. But when Yoichi Takahashi first started writing Captain Tsubasa, football was irrelevant in Japan. In fact, Japan had no professional league at that time, and most people were unaware or didn't know how the game worked. But Captain Tsubasa changed everything. And reportedly, from 1981 to 1987, 250,000 boys signed up to football schools in Japan. Because of this, Captain Tsubasa is often credited for the explosive growth of football in the country. You can clearly see this in the amount of high-level attacking midfielders Japan has produced, which just so happens to be Tsubasa's position as well. The point I'm trying to illustrate is that anime has a direct effect on football in Japan, and the future talent knowingly or unknowingly ends up imitating the characters they've grown up with. So whatever will be the most influential football anime of our generation, you can bet your ass it will have lasting effects on football in Japan. Will those shows be Blue Lock or Awashi? I don't know. I'm just some dude who makes anime videos, but one thing is for sure. This nation is unbelievably hungry for a World Cup win. So let's talk about how we might get there. Blue Lock picks up right after Japan loses in the 2018 World Cup. And the solution they came up with? Let's traumatize a whole generation of players. Yay! Woo. Awesome. The way they go about this is as follows. They invite the 300 best high school strikers into a training camp that pits them against each other. Here, they undergo different challenges, each one designed to hone specific attacking skills. And if you lose, you will die. Okay, I lied. However, you will be excluded from ever playing for the Japanese national team. The philosophy behind this madness is that the best strikers in the world are all egoists, which basically means that all your favorite players are fucking assholes. Whoa, 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 it's a joke. Chill. So in order to create a striker like Messi, Ronaldo or Neymar in a country like Japan, where sacrificing for the group is everything, you need to go a bit loco. Blue Lock is extremely entertaining, but the author probably never meant for this to be taken literally. And I hate to be that guy, but for the sake of this video, I have to try and apply the stuff to real life. And oh boy, here we go. Let's start at the beginning. Did Japan lose to Belgium in the 2018 World Cup due to having bad strikers? No, not at all. Actually, in that game, Japan was up 2-0 at one point. With less than half of the game time remaining, Japan then conceded two goals in a span of five minutes and a third goal during overtime. Unless they decided to dropkick their goalkeeper in the face, conceding three goals is usually not the striker's fault. No, it was the defense that was clearly the problem here. So if anything, they should invite the 300 most promising defenders to battle to the death. But even I have to admit, that sounds pretty damn boring. But despite this, you always want a forward on your team that can make some magic happen. However, that alone is not enough to win the World Cup. The series even mentions it itself, because none of these quote-unquote egoistic strikers have actually won. I've heard some people mention Michael Jordan as an example from another sport, because he is famous for his almost psychotic competitiveness. And Michael Jordan is considered the god of basketball, but even he took seven years to lift his first trophy. On top of that, he never won without Scottie Pippen, and he had one of the greatest coaches 
coaches of all time in Phil Jackson. I want you also to consider that basketball only has five players on the court, making the impact of an individual so much greater. Now, imagine how hard it is for an individual to carry in an 11-man team. Actually, you don't have to imagine. Just look at Erling Holland. Holland is a 195 centimeter Nordic god who's breaking so many scoring records that even his coach said he is jealous. And people are discussing if he is the best player in the world right now. Despite that, his team Norway failed to even qualify for the 2022 World Cup. Well, now that we know it won't guarantee a World Cup win, would the Blue Lock program create the best strikers in the world? Oh hell nah. To start with, progress isn't linear, so eliminating players that quickly is a huge waste. You might be eliminating someone who has the talent to be amazing but has plateaued for the moment. The worst thing though is that these players are practicing against autofilled defenders and goalkeepers. Defenders and goalkeepers need very different skill sets compared to strikers, so it's not all that impressive if you score in Blue Lock since well, their defense is ass. And if the Blue Lock kids would come up against elite defenders and goalkeepers, they would struggle immensely. So my conclusion is that using the methods from Blue Lock is not going to win Japan the World Cup. Big shocker, I know, who would have thought. So with Blue Lock down, let's move on to Aoashi. Ao Ashi is a much more stereotypical sports anime that is based extremely closely on reality. It's the story of a talented boy from the countryside who is discovered by a scout. We then follow his growth as he trains in a pro team youth program. Right off the bat, Yuko Kobayashi seems to really know his stuff when it comes to football in Japan. He explains to you the structure of Japanese high school and youth football in excruciating detail. And you will definitely learn something new when reading this manga. Interestingly, the main character in Ao Ashi has the polar opposite development compared to Blue Lock. He starts off the story as a talented but extremely egoistic player, but due to his lack of knowledge and professional training, he gets humbled again and again. So what's the road to winning the World Cup according to Awashi? It was never said directly, but with a high focus on the topic, I assume it's youth development. To be honest, it seems like a cop-out to just say, make more good players and you'll win. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock, but it is true. In 2018, 50 World Cup players were born in France, the country with the second most World Cup players was Brazil with 28. I mentioned this because the depth of your talent pool is arguably more important than the peak talent you produce. However, the problem is that Japan's domestic professional league is not nearly as good as the ones abroad. So according to Aoashi, Japan's optimal strategy seems to be a focus on youth development so that they can raise the average player level and create players good enough to be picked up by foreign leagues. Another thing that Ao Ashi proposes is that a playmaker is essential. You know, all those scenes where the main character suddenly has the Sharingan and can track every person's movement in real time? Yeah. That's what they mean with Playmaker, which also plays a big role in Blue Lock, but it seems to be more aligned with modern football the way that Ao Ashi handles it. This is really oversimplified, but it seems that the idea of the traditional Playmaker in the front is slowly dying out, and that in modern football the Playmaker is being moved more and more towards the back. So it's really fitting that Ashto is placed in the defense as the Playmaker, and probably into the midfield as the show progresses. And the last thing I took away from Ao Ashi is that you need to teach your players tactics tactics as soon as possible. This story shows over and over that knowledge of ideas like the triangle, playing in five lanes and connecting as a defense can bring your play to the next level, which is easier said than done. And for that purpose, you need to get world-class coaches that can keep you on the cutting edge of football tactics. You can't really disagree with any of the things that Ao Ashi emphasizes, but there's the problem. Ao Ashi is telling you to do what everyone else is doing, just do it better. And that's exactly what my Asian mom would tell me. What the hell? Even though this is unlikely to happen, let's say Japan suddenly starts investing hard into football. All in, baby, let's go. And after 10 years, that somehow brings them up to par with the European leagues. Would Japan win then? Maybe. Their chances would definitely be a lot higher, but here's my conclusion after all of this. The World Cup is very dependent on luck. You only get to play a maximum of 7 games in the tournament, and losing just a single one of these could mean elimination. Your team could have a bad day, or your opponent converts the only shot on the goal they had the whole game. And boom, you're out. This makes the whole World Cup so damn hard to predict. Yes, you do have teams that come in as favorites, but at the end, you don't know how it will shake out on the day. In 2014, if Germany played Argentina, Argentina in a best of five for the trophy, would Germany still win? I'm not sure, but that's what makes the World Cup so damn exciting and why we love watching it. Because whenever that whistle blows and the game starts, we might be witnessing a miracle in the making.